interestingly, so Winter Circle um, did a sort of a, a, a quick sort of survey at the beginning of this year, um, and, and some of this is probably obvious, but we, we went back and had a look what leaders of in-house search functions were doing 10 years ago, uh, and 88% of them, probably including the majority of people in this room, um, weren't doing anything to do with in-house search. They might have been in search firms externally, they might have been in sort of talent teams uh, 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 on more lateral recruitment, but it's really interesting, and, and that number is still high, but dropped uh, to five years ago, about 42%. But there is definitely a shift and a trend of professionals from the search market into in-house positions. I think if we cast our mind back 10, 15, maybe 20 years ago, um, we saw that trend happen in at the sort of lateral level, um, which spawned a lot of the uh, RPO businesses. Um, and we are definitely starting to see some very quality high-level um, high professionals that are starting to lead and run and, and populate some of these, um, uh, some of these functions. Um, and it's clearly evident by you know, uh, 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 events like today and various others that um, this is becoming a serious part of, uh, of HR. But what, what I would say, and again, you know, having spent the last three years on the road and talking to a lot of clients, is there isn't, uh, or there's very few organisations that have managed to really scale uh, their in-house exec teams. Um, there, you know, I think Alexa mentioned earlier on. I think there's about 18 in, in Visa's team globally. Um, we have seen companies like Warner Media, Disney, Dell, uh, Microsoft, uh, to name but a few, that have over 50 uh, individuals that sit within those functions, and some have actually set up. Uh, organizations or, or structures that are very similar to search firms. So they have their research capability, they have their uh, out, out outreach capability, and then they have like a client uh, services function as well. So there definitely are pockets where, where it's happening, um, but I would say that's an exception, not a norm, but it's really healthy and really exciting, certainly for Windcircle, given you know, that is our, our, our client base, um, to start to see some organizations really starting to grow. Um, and, um, but the main reason we, we've heard and some of the challenges, and I think this came up in a round table beforehand, um, was trying to get that initial investment. So trying to get whether it's the business, the stakeholders, uh, HR, to actually um, you know, start to put some additional fixed cost into the business um, to be willing to start seeing that, that return come back. Um, there's a nervousness around uh, the retention of IP and data. So if we hire big teams of 50 odd people in, in search functions, does that data and does that IP walk out of the business when, when individuals do? Uh, and we certainly had a conversation around, you know, one of the first things search firms uh, or internal search functions that starts to need to do is really start to capture that data uh, and, and the custodian of that data is the business, not the individuals that happen to be sitting in those, those teams at the time. Um, and, and, and around you know, actually starting to forecast uh, how much activity is going to happen at the more senior end um, to be able to plan for that and make sure you've got the right team in place. But overridingly, we, we have heard that, and again, I think it's resonated today, is what, what is the technology that's in place that, that allows to help us to, 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 to one, grow these functions? And, and, and it's interesting, um, we, we, we live in a world today where um, we have um, technology at our fingertips, whether it's you know, delivering taxis to our front door, food, movies, uh, uh, and, and we're all uh, consumers of those technologies, but um, we, we're just not seeing that resonate up into the, um, into the search arena. Um, and, and, you know, the, the HR world is spending uh, money on technology. Um, last year, $40 billion worth of investment was spent in HR tech, and a third of that came through, through startups. Um, but what we are finding is the majority of that spend is either through some of the big vendor implementations, Workday, SuccessFactors, et cetera, um, or uh, it's being spent at the grad level or the um, mid-level. So there's a lot of, I think John mentioned earlier on, around sort of gamification, online assessments, predictive analytics. And what we've been working in, in partnership with some of these vendors as well is just trying to get those solutions to be relevant to, to, to the exec population. 
Um, clearly, their business model is going to be based where the volume is, uh, and we are starting to see rhetoric from some other vendors to say, okay, look, we, we, we realize actually this is a really good population to be working with. They're very vocal. Uh, that actually makes significant choices around some vendor choices in terms of the, the processes. So we are starting to, at least we're starting to hear the rhetoric now. Um, we, we, we're hoping just to start to see some other partners come through and deliver uh, tech at the, the more senior end. Um, and, and, and I think there's, there's definitely a lag time. So going back to my first point, you know, this, the, uh, these, these in-house functions in your teams, I think, have been sort of developing and growing, or well, I'd say over the last sort of, 10 years or so, uh, and technology will follow. Um, I just think it's incumbent on whether it's vendors, uh, in-house teams, businesses, or, or, or candidates to really start to start pushing that uh, agenda through. Um, the, the, the other reason why I'm very confident the technology will follow um, is, is the candidates. Um, so if, if we look at the demographic of um, the very senior end, um, even if you expand that to the sort of CEO, so the average age of the CEO is actually getting older right now. There's an EY study, um, I'm happy to point people to. Um, it's, it's only going up slowly, but that's around longevity and, and individuals are staying in workplace far, far longer. But if you look at the COOs that have set up some of the more sort of disruptor firms at like Twitter, Spotify, Napster, um, uh, who else is there, Skype, et cetera, the average age of those founders uh, were 38 when they set those businesses up. So the actual distribution uh, uh, depth, if you like, or width of the senior population um, is actually really starting to widen. And you're seeing um, firms that are run by uh, younger CEOs that are really starting to push through the consumer process. So they're treating all of their candidates like consumers. Um, they're being, the consumers are demanding that they, they, they expect digitalization. Um, and and what, what we've started to see, again, we do a lot of work over in, in the US on, on the West Coast, is that these organizations are really starting to listen to that. And uh, you know, the, the founders of you know, Spotify and those guys are saying, look, we will engage with our senior, most senior candidates in that way. We'll digitalize it. We will, we will treat them like consumers. And actually, we're starting to see that trend drift um, uh, over towards let's say sort of bigger organizations or mature organizations that have been around and led by um, uh, individuals at the uh, sort of other end of the spectrum. Um, but what they're also saying, and it's a, a candidates that we are talking to on, on a daily basis at the more senior end, is although they may not have grown up with um, technology such as you know, Generation Y, um, I think a lot of them are frustrated that there's a big assumption that they're not a consumer of technology um, and, they're, they're, and they're afraid of technology. Um, and it's interesting when we engage with our, during our research and go out and speak to um, you know, a high level number of candidates on an ongoing basis, is that they're really surprised that that, that digitalization or disruption hasn't started to hit the, 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 the search process. So, we're getting uh, in-house teams that we work with say to us, look, we need disruption, we need technology, we need to start to be able to scale. We're getting candidates that are saying, look, you know, it's really surprising I still have to go and write a Word CV and send it in and get it sort of processed that way. So, you know, we, 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 you know the technology, the, the, the appetite's there, and I think it's incumbent on um, vendors like Wind Circle, which is exactly why we're set up to try to start to provide some, um, some services to, to, to in-house teams. Um, the role um, maybe 10, 15 years ago of exec, uh, exec search teams in-house in was really around driving down cost. Um, and I am seeing that shift uh, happen on, on, on a daily basis, every um, organization that we're talking to. Um, so don't get me wrong, I think cost is still a major driver um, and, and it's one that's um, reasonably trackable uh, from what we heard the, the, this morning. Um, but, but a lot of it is around also being able to do strategic talent planning, succession planning, um, capturing data uh, and playing that data back to the business and letting them know what's going on in the market um, and engaging candidates on, on an ongoing basis. It shouldn't be a very sort of transactional um, relationship during a hiring process. Um, we hear a lot of the time that um, there are numerous uh, um, occasions where they will speak to a candidate who is very well assessed, uh, and actually very well suitable for that organization. Six months, a year, 18 months, possibly to, as far as two years out, um, that same search will be run or they're still looking for someone with that similar skill set. Uh, and they're, and, and they're, they're rehired for another search firm um, just because they haven't engaged with that population on an ongoing basis and they've lost that relationship with it. Um, 
So, um, look, I, I think one of the things that we, we encourage when we speak to our um, clients or, or prospective clients is, you know, they always ask us, you know, what, what, what is it that good teams are doing out there? What are they doing well? What is the first step that we can make in terms of transforming our, our function? Um, and, 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 and the answer is simple for us. It's just start capturing data. Um, we, we see data circumnavigated through um, search firms just going directly to the business or onto emails and not using ATS systems. Um, and if you don't know what's going on in, in your systems um, or, or in your organization, sorry, it's going to be really hard to sort of great, gain that sort of credible conversation, that strategic conversation um, with, your, with your business lines. And then it's about keeping that data live, um, making sure you can sort of draw down on it, being smart around who's updating that profiles. We talked about you know, GDPR and some of the challenges that GDPR presented on this. Um, you know, Winter Circle have tried to circumnavigate that by getting all the candidate data updated by the candidates themselves and feeding that straight into the business. So it's about having that live data um, and, um, uh, uh, and bringing it directly to your, to your desktops. And then, you know, building open API systems amongst all the different technologies that you're, you're working with.